In this tutorial, I'll show you some really useful tips about the use of the camera, and especially if you have multiple cameras in the scene. So in this particular scene, I have uh, three cameras. This one here labeled camera.001, that one's camera.002, and this is my original camera. I just pressed Shift D to make a copy of the camera, or you could bring it up from the menu with Shift A, and you can just add a camera to the scene like that. All right, and the other thing is each one of these cameras I have this line associated in here because there's an empty right here in the center. I think that's it, yeah. I have each one of the cameras is parented to that empty so you can see the cameras are actually moving around in the scene like that. But now there's something to be, you know, to notice here. Now notice if I make this the active camera, if I select it, or at least if it, it seems like it's the active camera, right? But if you notice the view, I'm looking at the back side of this object. I just have this type of object so I can kind of orient myself in the scene like that. But that's not really what this camera is looking at, even though I have it selected. So that's not the key to having multiple cameras like this in the scene is to take a look at this triangle. See it's a hollow triangle versus the one that's actually doing the looking right now is this one over here. If you look into that, that has a solid triangle like that. And that's the one that actually is controlling the view, because if I move this up and down, you can see that's changing. However, if I click that, the view didn't change, just in camera view here with zero on the numpad. And if I move this up and down, you don't see it being affected over here. So the to make sure you're looking using the correct camera in the scene, just make sure you're looking at that the camera that has the solid triangle. And to pick it, you have to come over here in this right here, this menu right here, scene. And then right down here is shows the three cameras in the scene like that. All right, and this one shows it's a camera, so I want to pick camera here, and suddenly it's changed it to a solid triangle. Now that's the view that I see in there. All right, because that can certainly throw you. And then uh, there are several other things that are really important too. Is one in here within the camera? If you come down here. Uh, well, see, with the camera selected, not down in here, but let's go over into the camera button right here like this for the object data. This kind of changes the icon. If you have a regular object, it becomes an upside down triangle like this. If I click this, see it's an upside down triangle. If I select a camera, right select it, it turns it into camera icon. If it was a curve, it would look like a curve. So with the camera selected, if I come down here, I'll turn this off. That's off by default. And I'll turn limits on. And what limits does, it shows you your clipping plane. So right here, I have my clipping plane set between 0 and 99.12. And if I take a look at the scene from above by pressing 7 and then 5 on the keyboard, now I'm in ortho mode. And there it shows me the how far the camera is looking. That's what's going to be within range. And you can see the cube is not in view here because the clipping plane doesn't quite reach far enough. So if I change the clipping plane a little bit, you'll start seeing it come into view on this side right here. All right, so it kind of gives you a reference so you know, because sometimes you'll be zooming in to a scene or zooming out and obstacles start disappearing and you can adjust your clipping plane, the start and the end values right here. So that's a powerful little tool within the camera button like that. The other nice one is mist as well. If you press mist, if you happen to have mist set, all right, let me, you see the mist here there's the mist distance right there and that you set over here in this button right here with the world and then down here at the bottom you can click mist and I'll look at the menus and then your depth so your minimum to your depth so if I change this here you can see the mist comes gets shorter and shorter and you can see it covering everything up and that really shows up best when you press oops didn't mean to do that. All right, let me get, if there's a little bit of mist like that, I'll just hit F12 for a second and render it. And then you get a better idea. I'll try and cover it up a little bit more. F12 and see it gets misty in the scene like that. All right. Okay, so well, I don't really need the mist for the moment. So I'll just escape that, go back to my regular view, and I'll go back into perspective view in here. Like that and then I'll go turn the mist off for now. Alright, so those are really useful and then a couple other really useful tips are that I'll go to my active camera which is this one here and there I'm looking at it in the scene like this. Now you'll notice when you're 
you're looking at it like this and you're changing the view and sometimes you want to kind of change the view but if you come over here and try and move this scene around while you're in camera mode if I press the middle mouse button and move I kind of lose it it goes back into just a regular viewing mode I've lost the camera view so I'm going to press 0 on the numpad again and get my camera view back so if you press N to get the properties window up and you and then down here under view just lock the camera to the view all right and I'll, then when you do you get the little red dots around it now when I do that when I now navigate through the scene in camera view like this what I'm doing is I'm changing my view but you can actually see I'm actually changing the position of the camera in the world at the same time all right that's a that's really useful and then one other uh, useful feature is uh, from here if you're just in regular navigation mode and you're looking at a scene from say here you can press control alt and then zero on the numpad at the same time and it aligns it to whatever your view happens to be in the world like that all right so I'll just change it back like that all right well so those are all really helpful techniques to help you navigate the scene all right well that's it for this lesson and I'll see you in the next lesson